I am Brooke, owner and creator of Homeschool Resource Co. And I am here. I always tell you guys that I have five kids. Oop. I am a homeschool mom to five and that something is always going on. So here they are. So I thought it was a perfect opportunity to introduce them all to you. See if we can get them in here. <laughs> Um, while we're doing this kids class, so they're going to be watching live as well. Uh, I do want to remind everyone and I'll put it on the screen for you that right now we are promoting the gospel collection, which is 36 amazing Christ centered, Christ centered resources that we're offering for 95% off right now. It's a limited time offer. You can only get it until April 7th and you can just click that link to go over and check it out. But it's an amazing resource. This is one of my favorite collections we've ever put out in the three years that we've been in business. So check it out. I do want to remind you that, again, I am a homeschool mom just like you, uh, that if for some reason <laughs> you guys know how it is, if you watched our lives before, you know that sometimes I run off the screen to deal with a child. <laughs> but it's it's real life around here, guys. But I am so excited to have Anne from Future Flying Saucers here with us today. And she's going to be teaching our kids an amazing ob object. I almost said something totally different, but object <laughs> level lesson. So I am excited. Anne, why don't you tell our audience about who you are? All right. Well, hello. Uh, my name is Anne Marie Gosnell. I do go by Anne Marie. I'm a two namer here in the South. Uh, I'm in South Carolina with my family and I homeschool as well. I have three children. Uh, my son is 15, about to turn 16. That's crazy. Uh, I have a daughter who is 14 and another daughter who is 11. And so we've been homeschooling for years and years and years, and we absolutely love it. And of course, as you know, there's like those days that are hard to get through, but then you have those days that you're just like, oh, this is the best thing ever. So if you're having one of those days where you're like, I just want to throw it up in the air and just stop, don't do it. Keep going. And uh, you, it's, it's wonderful, the uh, blessings that the Lord will bring through your efforts. So I'm excited to be here. Uh, yet I own a Future Flying Saucers resources. You can find me online. I truly believe that those of us who teach the Bible to children, let's teach the way the master teacher taught. Let's teach like Jesus did. And, uh, you know, if you look through the scriptures, he teaches with object lessons and stories. And so that's what we're going to be doing this morning. I'm excited to join you. Uh, a lot of my lessons are free online at futureflyingsaucers.com. I do also have uh, books that are available. The lesson I'm doing today comes from my object lesson book from the uh, Old Testament. And I'm really excited. I have a new book. Brooke, I don't even, even know if you know this, or, but I have a new book coming out in August, which is uh, Object Lessons Through the Prophets, where I focus on lessons from the major and the minor prophets that will go after this uh, Old Testament book. But um, I'm so excited to join you all today. And we're going to have some balloons and some fire. And what else could we have that's better than that? And Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I do want to remind everyone before I let Anne have the stage here that um, this is live. It is for kids. If you have questions, there's a chat option that you can ask your questions. And let's say our immediate questions, we'll save um, all questions for after Anne finishes her lesson. Um, but we will be here to answer those questions for you. So ask them in the chat. If you have any comments or concerns, go for it. Share it with us. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, my kids are going to be watching live too. I will be here, but I will not be on screen. So if anyone needs any links or um, has any questions, I'll be answering that in the chat as well. So before we get started, um, I'm going to excuse myself from the stage, but Anne, if you wouldn't mind just saying a quick prayer over this lesson and over our audience and over the families that are participating as I leave the stage and I will let you have it. Absolutely. Let's do it. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I praise you and I thank you for a beautiful day, another day to be with our children, another day that we can serve you, another day that we can glorify you. And uh, during this next hour, Lord, that we have together, I pray that you would take the words that I speak, the words from your scriptures, Lord, that your spirit would just be not just here with me, 
But with everybody who is a part of this webinar, Lord, I just pray that your spirit would be so sweet this morning, that children would have eyes to see and ears to hear, and that uh, parents would be able to be encouraged and maybe challenged a little. Uh, Lord, I just thank you for how you work, and I thank you for this opportunity. May you be glorified in everything. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I am so excited to be with you today. So if you have a Bible, I want you to get your Bible. I'm going to get mine. It's right here next to me. Uh, so I want you to have a Bible with you because it's very important that we read God's words together. And so I'm going to get mine. I have it right over here. Here's my Bible right here. Uh, parents, if you are always looking for a good Bible translation for your children, I highly recommend the International Children's Bible. This is the one that I'm going to be reading from today. Um, so if you have your Bible, I'm going to give you just a minute and I want you to find Genesis chapter 3. Now, if you know your books of the Bible, you'll know that Genesis is the very first book of the Bible. So it's really, really early in the, in the Bible, and it's going to be the big three that you're looking for. So Genesis chapter three, and we're going to start in verse one. And so while you're turning there, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what's happened in the Bible before this chapter. So in Genesis chapter one and two, we learn that God has created the whole world. He created the land. He created the sky. He created the stars and the moon. He created the trees. He created the birds and the fish and the animals. And after he created all that stuff, he created man and woman, right? And he put Adam and Eve and he put them in a garden. I bet that garden was amazingly beautiful. And I bet it had all kinds of trees that had flowers and bushes that had great big blueberries or raspberries. Um, if you are able to put something in the chat, what is your favorite fruit to get off of a tree or off of a plant uh, or even your favorite vegetable? Or uh, maybe you like sweet potatoes. What is your favorite to put in your mouth to eat? Because God has given us so many wonderful foods to eat. Uh, blueberries is one, carrots and strawberries, cherries and oranges, yum. Cantaloupe, ooh, a nice sweet cantaloupe is so good. What else, what other things do you like to eat? That God created watermelon. Ooh, it's going to be watermelon time pretty soon, isn't it? Pears, strawberries, carrots. I'm impressed with those of you who like carrots. My children don't like carrots very much. Oranges, raspberries, very good. Kiwi. Ooh, yes, kiwi is fun. Um, very good choices. All right, I agree. Those are all pretty yummy. So can you imagine if you were Adam and Eve in the garden and you had all these wonderful fruits and you had all these beautiful trees, but then one day Eve was in the garden and a serpent came. And that's where we pick up in chapter three. So now the snake or the serpent was the most clever. Now, what does clever mean? Clever means he was kind of smart and he could think through and plan through and, and, and deceive. He was clever. In this case, he could deceive. So the snake was the most clever of all the wild animals the Lord God had made. And one day the snake spoke to the woman and he said, did God really say that you must not eat fruit from any tree in the garden? And the woman answered the snake, oh, we can eat fruit from the trees in the garden. But God told us you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. You must not even touch it or you will die. But the snake said to the woman, 
Oh, you won't die. God knows that if you eat the fruit from the tree, you will learn about good and evil, and then you'll be like God. Well, the woman saw that the tree was beautiful, and she saw that its fruit was good to eat, and that it would make her wise. So she took some of its fruit, and what'd she do with it? She ate it, and then she gave some of the fruit to her husband who was with her and he ate it. And then it was as if the man's eyes and woman's eyes were opened and they realized they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together. They made something to cover themselves. And they heard the Lord God walking in the garden and they went and hid. Wow. So let's think about this a minute. I have some fun things to help us think about this a little bit. So I have a candle and I'm going to light my candle. Now, hopefully I don't have a nice big table here for you to be able to see things. So hopefully I can make this work. Okay. So I'm going to light my candle. Oh, isn't it beautiful? Do you like candles? I think candles are very pretty. So we're going to pretend we're going to pretend. I mean, she saw that tree, right? And she saw, Eve saw the tree and she thought it was beautiful. And fire can be beautiful. I, I wonder, do you have um, gas logs or maybe you have a fire pit? And it's so nice to sit by a fire sometimes, especially on a cool evening. And it's nice to roast marshmallows. And sometimes it's fun just to look at the fire. It's so pretty. It's got different colors in it. So fire can be so pretty. And she looked at that tree and it was so beautiful in her eyes. But the problem was the snake started planting and some doubts in her brain and started having her think about God in a way that was not true. And you know what? Adam and Eve had this perfect relationship with God. They walked with God in the garden it was a perfect relationship. They could talk to God about anything. And they walked with him and talked with him. And, oh, can you just imagine walking with God through this beautiful garden? And then there was this tree and the snake. Well, Eve made a choice, didn't she? And Adam made a choice, too. Because, see, that tree was so beautiful. But the problem is they took what they thought was beautiful and what they thought would give them wisdom. And what would happen? <laughs> what happened when they took that fruit and ate it? I have to go find my balloon. Look what happened. It broke. It broke their relationship with God. She wanted wisdom. And what happened was, is that she really wanted to be like God, didn't she? And you know, I'm going to light my candle again. She saw that tree. She's like, oh, it could make me like God. It could make me wise. I would be in charge of my life. I'm going to take that fruit. I'm going to eat it. Oh. Broke. It broke. What about you? You know, Adam and Eve had babies. And then those babies grew up and had babies. And those babies grew up and had babies. And, all you know, all humanity, all down the line, you know, scripture says that we are all born into sin. And that's you and me. We all have sin in our lives. And so maybe sometimes you're like Adam and Eve too. And you look at something and you go, oh, I don't want to obey mom right now. Or maybe you're like, oh, mom said I couldn't have cookies before dinner, but oh, they're right there on the counter. I really want a cookie. And you go and you take a cookie. Or maybe you accidentally broke something but you don't want to tell mom or dad you broke something and so you lie. What happens? What happens? We're choosing to do something. Oh! 
and look, it breaks. It breaks. Sin, sin breaks. It breaks relationship. And just like Adam and Eve, can you see that? Look at all my little pieces of balloons. They're all broken. And you know what? I can't put these back together again. Like they're all, they're all broken. See, like there's this piece here. This one has this big old hole in it. Look, this is just the tail. <laughs> I can't, I can't glue these all back together, can I? So they had sin and their children, Cain and Abel had sin too. And then when Cain and Abel had children, they had sin too. And it all comes down to us. It all comes down to us. And the thing is, they couldn't fix this relationship with God. In fact, what happened? God had to take Adam and Eve and put them out of the garden. They couldn't even stay in the garden with God anymore. God is perfect. He is holy. And see, they weren't, they had a broken relationship with God. Everything was broken. But even when God was taking Adam and Eve out of the garden and he was telling them what their consequences were, have you ever had a consequence before? Maybe mom and dad catch you in the lie, right? Or, you know, you're disobedient and you have a consequence, right? Adam and Eve had a consequence. They had to go out of the garden. But God also told them a promise. That at some point, there was going to be a person that was going to crush the head of that serpent. That snake was going to be dealt with. This broken sin problem is going to be fixed. Does anybody know the name of that person who was God's son that fixes our sin problem? If you know his name, put it in the chat. Who is it that fixes our sin problem? Write it in the chat. What's his name? Do you know? Sometimes he goes by the name. Ah, there we go. I see it. I see it. I see it. Sometimes he has a name called living water. And see, when we have living water in us, Things are a little different. When we choose to believe in Jesus, because in John 3, 16, he tells us whoever believes in him, he doesn't want us to perish. He wants us to have eternal life with him. And eternal life is fixing this problem right here, this broken relationship. So when we are filled with living water, when we have Jesus with us, when we are tempted to do things, look what happens. My balloon didn't break. It still didn't break. My balloon's not breaking. You know why? I don't know if you can hear that or not. Put it by my microphone. Can you hear what it's filled with? It's filled with water. So when we are filled with Jesus, we're still going to make decisions that aren't best for us. We're still going to sin. And sin is anything that we think, do, or say that does not please Jesus. We're going to do those things sometimes. But when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, first off, he helps us and gives us to the strength to stay away from sin in the first place, okay? But when we do make a choice, we aren't going to break. I'm gonna blow out my candle. Our relationship is still good with him, but look what's on it. Do you see how the candle, the candle put this black stuff on here? When we choose to sin, it might scar us. It might hurt us some. Sin can hurt people around us too sometimes when we make choices. But with Jesus, 
we have forgiveness. And so when we ask him for forgiveness, we've done something wrong. We go to him and say, Lord Jesus, I am so sorry. Please forgive me. I don't want to do this anymore. He takes away that sin. So some of the black comes off. But we're still left with some of those consequences. Sin is a big deal. Sin is a big deal. But just like with my broken balloons, my broken balloons here, we can't fix the sin problem by ourselves. We have to have God fix that sin problem for us. And we do that by believing in Jesus. Jesus is our living water who helps us choose to not sin. <laughs> to not sin all the time. He helps us make better choices through the power of the Holy Spirit. Because what's so cool is Jesus is our living water and he indwells inside of us. The Holy Spirit indwells. He lives inside of us. Now, it doesn't hurt when the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside of us. Sometimes you can feel him in there, though, because sometimes you feel his love. Sometimes you feel his patience. Sometimes you feel his peace inside of you. You can feel the Holy Spirit in you. But it doesn't hurt because he doesn't actually, you know how you have a, a heart and, and lungs and you have blood and you have all that stuff inside of you. Holy Spirit isn't like, in the, he's in our in our soul heart. Our soul heart that has ears to hear him. And um, everybody has one of those inside of them. And that is where he goes. He dwells with us. He lives with us. And he helps us make good decisions to stay away from sin. And does that mean we're going to be perfect every day? No. No. Because we live in this world. And you know what? Sometimes things happen that are not good. Sometimes we make choices that are not good and hurt other people, but sometimes other people make bad choices and can hurt us. Sometimes people make bad choices and can hurt a lot of people. And that's why we need Jesus because it's with his help. It's only with his help, only with the living water that we are able to make better choices. And even still, we're going to be selfish. And even still, we're going to make choices that are not great sometimes. But hopefully, we'll make better choices because we desire to live for Jesus instead of living for ourselves. Because that's really what it comes down to with Adam and Eve, right? They wanted to be like God. And when we disobey, that's when we want to be in charge and not God. Or we want to be in charge and we want to call the shots and we say, God, I want no part of you. I'm the most important. And that's what Adam and Eve did. But when we have Jesus, he reminds us through the Holy Spirit, uh, 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 you're not the most important. God's the most important. And we live for him. And we do our best to follow him all the days of our lives. So, which would you rather have? Do you want a broken balloon? Or do you want a balloon filled with Jesus, the living water? Sometimes we're going to sin. We're going to have scars on us sometimes with our choices. But which is better? I personally like this one better. Living water. Type living water. We want living water, don't we? We don't want to be broken. We want to be whole. And that's what Jesus helps us with. So I want us to pray together. Let's pray. Our feet are still. Our hands are still. And we're going to bow our head and we're going to close our eyes. And let's talk to Jesus. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for being with us today. Lord, help us to stay away from sin. Sometimes it's so hard that we want to make choices of our own and not do things that mom and dad say. We don't want to do things our teachers say sometimes, and we don't want to do things that you tell us to do sometimes. 
But with Jesus, Lord, we know that we have the power to make good choices. And we can stay away from sin as much as we can. And on those times that we do flub up and make mistakes, we can come to you for forgiveness. All the time we can come to you for forgiveness. Thank you, Jesus, for being with us today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, your mom or your dad or grandma or whoever you're with probably has a printable, a page that kind of goes with this lesson. And on there, you can, depending on how old you are, there's some coloring you can do. There's a scripture memory verse to help you remember what you've learned today. Um, there are some questions that you can use your Bible to answer to help you remember things. Um, if I remember right, there's some little pictures that you might be able to cut out and then you can retell the story. Maybe you know of someone or maybe your dad's not home or your, your grandma's, you're going to go visit your grandma or whatever, and you can take those uh, little puppets and retell the story and tell them all about the candle and the balloons and what Adam and Eve did and how we can have... Oops, Look, I got a broken balloon stuck here. And how we can have living water and they can too. Thank you for joining me. Hey, Brooke, is there anything else that we need to do this morning? Is Brooke here? I am here. It's there taking a second are. for my camera to come up. There we go. Okay. <laughs> yes, I am here. So um, I asked if we had any questions. I don't think we do, but I did want you to share. Um, let's see if I can get this pulled up here. Um, the what God is doing. Uh, you yeah. sent us that link that kind of goes along with um, what you talked about today. Um, tell us a little bit more about that, how they can buy it, where it's at. I also shared your YouTube channel in the comments as well. Okay. Yeah. Did you want me to put the link to the book in here or what, or did, do you want to do that? Um, I think I have that. Um, okay. let me make sure that's where this link is going. I'm cleaning up broken balloon pieces. <laughs> the, the digital okay. ebook we have, um, in the link at the bottom of the page. Okay. Um, so yes, we have the, the ebook to that, but you also have other um, options. There's a physical option like you're holding as well. So where can we purchase that at? Yeah. Okay. So uh, this is um, available on Amazon or Barnes and Noble. I think it's on uh, walmart.com too. Uh, and it's also in my shop. If you go on futureflyingsaucers.com, the book is there. Uh, this is just the first one of the series. It's a whole series. Uh, this one has, I think, 28, 26. This has 26 object lessons in it that go uh, through the books of history. And then, like I told you, my new one is coming out of the, the, the through the prophets, which would add to this. And then I have... Um, one, another book, uh, Victory in Jesus, that goes through the Gospels. And then I have another one called All Consuming Fire, which goes through the book of Acts. And it's all these fun object lessons. Uh, let me tell you, there's an awesome fire one in uh, <laughs> All Consuming Fire. I have the same of fire. This is so fun. <laughs> <laughs> the kids loved it, though, because we had, we had someone in the chat say, oh, boy, when you pulled out the fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so fun. It's so fun. Uh, but what's really cool about these, uh, what's not like in the printable, you've got some activities and stuff. Um, what's really neat in here is um, I have these coloring sheets in the back of the book. And I love using timelines. And what is so fun is that you can have your children, like here's the one uh, that goes with today's lesson. Um, you can have your children color the uh, coloring sheet that goes with it, and then you can put them up beside it, and then you've got this whole timeline, and as you go through the scripture, you can talk about uh, the different things that happen in, in the books of history, because it's so important for us to remember that, um, just like we talked about today, that God planned in the garden for Jesus to come. And so understanding that the whole Old Testament is setting up 
the world for Jesus coming in the gospels. And, and so helping our children understand why Jesus had to come in the first place um, is just so crucial. Um, I also have, oh, let me get this off the shelf here. We have um, one question that asks if the lessons are specific to a denomination or is it good for all denominations? I try very hard to make them flexible for any denomination. I try very hard to stick just to scripture. Um, and I also, I've had uh, wonderful readers who, uh, because some, another good question is for what age range do the lessons work well with? I wrote them specifically for kindergarten through sixth grade, but I have some wonderful readers who tweak. Uh, I try to make the lessons very flexible. So they're able to tweak the lessons to go down to preschool, or they've also tweaked them a little bit to make them a little bit harder and use them for middle school and high school, which is so fun. Um, but another thing that um, I, I have written is a book called Mateo's Choice. And, you know, when you have children who start asking questions about what it means to follow Jesus, this is the one that I wrote specifically for that. Um, and I don't know if you're familiar with the wordless book, um, but Mateo goes through the whole choice of what it means to follow Jesus. And uh, you can, uh, it's great for even if your children don't read yet, you can just read the pictures. You know how to read the pictures. And then as your kids get older, there's the words are there and then there's scripture, there's scripture memorization. It's all, so um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, Laura, no, I don't do Catholic history. I'm sorry, it's not included. Um, so yeah, is there any other questions? So where um, is Mateo's Choice on your website as well? It is, and it's also on Amazon as well. If you're an okay. Amazon geek like I am, I, <laughs> I I always have fun surprises that show on my door. I'm like, yeah, I, I ordered that. So, uh, but this is fun. And this, I um, again, I wrote this for a specific specific ages for like uh, six, seven, and eight year olds. But again. Uh, through your creativity, you can tweak it for those who are younger and those who are older. Um, it's I just try to make things as user friendly as possible because I want um, I truly consider those people, moms, dads, grandmas, grandpas, church volunteers, church leaders. If you Christian school teachers too, anybody who teaches the Bible is a Bible teacher. And so those are the people that I try to resource. So um, we would uh, love to help you uh, in your journey of teaching the Bible to children. Talking yeah, we've history. included um, Anne's website as well as her YouTube link, which you can also find on her website. Um, but mm -hmm. you can also find her on social media and all of those good things. So if you want more object lessons for kids, then all you have to do is go to her YouTube because she has many there, or you can check out some of her resources. So if we don't have any more questions, the last thing, um, oh, we do have a question. How many years have you homeschooled, Nan? Oh, goodness. Let's see. Okay. So my son is in 10th grade. So that would have been uh 10 11 12 12 years 13 i don't know well, something <laughs> like that i don't know something like that and then uh i also taught in the classroom as well uh so that was oh, so you were a, a public school teacher a christian christian school teacher yeah uh -huh. yeah and what that's actually teach? where future flying saucers kind of kind of started because i i was teaching in christian school and then i would go and teach in my church and I just saw such a disconnect because, you know, I, in my opinion, I think churches are where the greatest education of the Bible should be. And um, I was just not seeing it. And so that's when I just started developing these lessons. And I'm like, you know what? I want the children who come to me uh, to learn the Bible. I want them to learn scripture. And um, so that's that's where all of these lessons, this is where the website came from. Um, I was having um, adult volunteers in our, I, I taught during uh, the Bible time during our, our Awana program at our church. 
And I had the volunteers coming to me saying, we learned more from your Bible class than on Sunday mornings. Oh, <laughs> no, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's where all of this came from. I just want, um, I want you all to be equipped to do what you want. And on Facebook, um, if you'll search on Facebook, um, I think it's either uh, Bible teachers who use object lessons or object lessons for Bible teachers. That is my Facebook group. I'm in there daily and we share all kinds of stuff. There are Bible teachers from around the world in there and we encourage each other and pray for each other. And I would um, love to have you all join us. So I want to thank Anne again for coming. I'm sorry, I keep calling you Anne, but I know you go by Anne Marie. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I'm in the South too. I'm in Louisiana. So we're, we're used to that. I just, not everybody goes by that. So I wasn't sure. <laughs> that's but, okay. Uh, I want to thank her for coming today. And guys, I know this was our very first kids class and we have plans to do more of these free kids classes for you and your homeschool and your kids. So if you enjoyed this class, send us an email or come in on our social media or share it with your friends. That way we know that this is the kind of content that you're loving, that you like, that you're looking for. Let us know what your kids thought. Let us know how we can do better. Um, we're always looking to be able to help you in your homeschool because that's what Homeschool Resource Co. is. We desire to help you, encourage you, give you the tools and the resources that you need to homeschool confidently and thrive while doing it for your whole family. Yeah. So as a reminder, before we wrap up, the Gospel Collection is live, 95% off. It's $29.99. But um, if you contact your favorite affiliate, your favorite blogger, and ask them, hey, are you an affiliate? They will have a 10% off coupon that they can share with you so that you can get it for, I think that makes it about $26.99. And um, if they're not an affiliate, encourage them to sign up as an affiliate with us so that they can share our resources with you as well. So if you are not familiar with us, you can also find us at homeschoolresourceco.com. See, this is what I'm talking about going live. I try to have them all set up, but since this was a kids class, I let them all stay. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Hi. 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 This is my little. Like, who is that crazy lady? <laughs> <laughs> so, so if you're excited about this kind of content, let us know. Find us at homeschoolresourceco.com. You're going to say hi now. <laughs> or to find us on social media we have lots of other free resources and things and um, we love to help you in your homeschool so if you want to send us an email and let us know what um what things are looking like for you and your homeschool and how we can help you let us know because again we are here for you that's what makes homeschool resource co thrive is helping families like you and we need to know what you're looking for to do that so thanks again, Anne-Marie. I am so excited and happy to have you join us. And I'm sure we will try to have you back soon again. Love it. So fun. So fun. Um, all right, guys, we're wrapping up. If you catch us on the replay, that'll be on all of our social media channels very soon. So thanks again for coming. Thanks for participating. Thanks for having your kids with us. And I am excited to share this content with you again. See you guys. <laughs>